So I recently bought this uh, used Bridgeport knee mill. It's a type 1 2 horsepower Bridgeport knee mill. I've always wanted a Bridgeport, <clears throat> just uh, never could afford one and never came across a good deal on one. This particular machine belonged to a friend of mine that I've known since I was pretty young. Um, unfortunately, he passed away about a year and a half ago, maybe not quite a year and a half ago. And so I bought the milling machine from his son. Um, he used it for many, many years to bore cylinders and not much more than that. So I've always tried to do as much of the work as I can in-house so that I didn't have to wait on anybody and, and I could get it the way I wanted it. I have a nice mill, and a, or a nice small mill, and a nice little lathe, a grizzly lathe, and I can do almost all the work. I can build one-off prototypes, but when I need to build something really complicated like a head, um, you know, removable dome head shell, or some of the side covers and stuff, I have to build a prototype, and then I send them off to somebody, and all the CNC work done. <clears throat> so, because I only do a couple of things, uh, I might build two, three, four parts at a time, or sometimes only one part at a time. It's really hard to justify um, somebody doing all the programming to do um, a run of CNC parts. And so uh, a lot of things I either can't get done anymore or they take forever. So I bought this uh, Type 1 Bridgeport and I've just finished converting it to a four axis CNC. Um, the three axis right now are that uh, X, Y, and Z um, that I can run. The fourth axis is going to be the rotary table. The rotary table's not mounted at this point in time, which is why you can't see it. But basically, I can do up, down, left, right, and then when parts are mounted on the rotary table, I can rotate them around and cut them. So that gives me quite a bit of versatility. What I did on this one was I started out with uh, um, lead shine uh, closed loop stepper motors. Uh, they are NEMA 34. This mill originally had uh, X and Y servo motors on it um, with an old uh, CRT uh, screen to do two axis movement. Um, what I did on this particular machine was I retained all the original um, housings for the uh, drivers, but I removed the servo motors off the drive assemblies, remachined them, and put some NEMA closed loop stepper motors on. They are uh, lead shine stepper motors. Um, and so I was able to modify the housings by machining a, a pocket on the back side. Uh, originally, the motors actually hung out on the outside, so to the left of the screen right now instead of to the right of the screen. And they hung out in the workspace and I have to walk by them all the time. So when I decided to, uh, you know, upgrade it, I flipped them around to the back side. Fortunately, the stepper motors are small enough or at least short enough in length that when I run the table all the way to the right, I have about, um, you know, eighth of an inch when I run out of table movement between the back of the stepper motor and the frame of the knee or the casting of the knee. So that worked out pretty good. Um, I have also converted the y-axis, very similar. You can see the I retained the original housing. I did leave a hand crank on, on the uh, front of the y direction and also on the right hand end of the x. So that I can move it by hand if I need to. In order to convert this machine to a closed loop stepper motor, um, I just went ahead and uh, built a whole brand new uh, case for it, cabinet for it. I only have single phase power coming into the shop. Um, I have good, two, good clean 220 coming in. However, the two horsepower motor on the bridge port is three phase, and to get really accurate uh, speed control, I needed the three phase motor to stay on there. So I went ahead and installed a uh, VFD, variable, variable frequency drive. Um, the cab cabinet has its own uh, breaker, so the cabinet's protected above and beyond what the wall circuit is. 
um, have a, a power filter in there. Went ahead and put four power supplies in, three of them are 60 volt to run the big stepper motors, and then one 36 volt uh, power supply that runs the uh, A axis on the rotary table. I'm only using a small stepper motor on that one, so it doesn't need as much power. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, 24 volt power supplies up at the top there and a latching relay. And then I have the three uh, large uh, um, CL86T uh, lead shine step remote, closed loop stepper motor drivers. Um, those work really, really well. And they're obviously a bit larger. Uh, the fourth one there at the top is the uh, A axis driver. Um, I did uh, put the 57T in there for the fourth axis. That gives me the ability to go up a couple of sizes on stepper motors if I think I need to. Um, I did put a pretty small stepper motor on the rotary table, and we'll see after I use it for a while if that's big enough. If not, I can go ahead and just swap the motor out and upgrade it. So cabinet-wise, it all went together pretty well, and uh, um, got a shutoff switch on the side of the cabinet. I got a little bit of cable clean up there, and I want to ground out the... Uh, um, the shield cables and then go ahead and put the door on and that'll finish up. To make sure everything's safe I went ahead and built a uh, an e-stop switch assembly. Um, obviously here's the e-stop, here's the momentary on to turn the contactor on so the motor can run. Um, there are times when I think I'm probably going to want to run this in a manual mode um, where I'm actually uh, you know, not using the computer to make the cut. So I did go ahead and put a forward and reverse switch in here. And then I have a manual speed controller here. The software that I'm running, the CNC 12, the Acorn CNC 12 software that I'm running does give me all that functionality, the forward, the reverse, the speed control, and even an e-stop electronically. But I wanted to make sure I have everything mechanical. Um, the e-stops are uh, wired in line. so. If I push this e-stop, everything shuts down. If I use the electronic e-stop, everything shuts down as well. Um, but I've got all my controls there, so I can still run it manually if I want to. This is my control or my controller software. This is the Acorn uh, CNC 12 um, version for the mill. Um, it has all four axes in it. You can see I have my... Uh, X, Y, and Z over here, plus my fourth axis already on there. Um, have my uh, manual feature so I can uh, uh, move it left, right, up, down, whatever I want to do manually. Um, I can run my speed control from here, or you know, ideally when when everything's uh, up and running, and uh, I have a little bit more time to program some more complicated features then I'll go ahead and download the g-code and let it run itself in uh, a full four axis mode. I did go ahead and uh, spend a little bit of extra money for a touch screen display so I can actually touch the screen here or here any of the directions that I need to and I can manually control it. I can start it or stop it from here manually. I don't need a keyboard or a, a pendant, um, so that's kind of a nice feature. Um, it works pretty slick. All I have to do is uh, touch the button. And I can run any of my four axis that way. And if I go ahead and uh, turn everything on, I can put it in forward. And my spindle's running. And with the VFD, I can go directly from spindle running forward. To spindle running backwards. The VFD uh, shuts the power down to the one direction, which still comes to a stop, flips it in the other direction.
The software also has a drilling um, and tapping feature that allows it to go down um, in a forward direction and come back out in the reverse direction. So it's a pretty cool feature. Um, it's uh, I don't know everything about the software yet, yet, and I probably never will, but it's got some amazing features in it, and it works really well. Everything plugged in. It took me a little bit of time to get the VFD program and to get all the software working properly with the VFD, but uh, um, I come right out in the morning, turn everything on, and it's worked flawlessly so far. So um, cut a couple of 2D parts, um, you know, uh, cut a couple of parts where... I just go down in the x-axis through the material and then cut out and just x and y um, so i've got a couple of spacer plates built and some stuff like that right now so uh, the next thing to do is go ahead and program it i have some intake manifolds that i want to build for a kx500 project that's going in a quad frame and i want to build some billet intake manifolds for the takati 3 and takati 4 so that'll probably be my first project um, I need to get those done so I can get a couple jobs out the door. Um, that's about the last thing remaining on those. So that'll be my next project. So that's been the project I've been working on for the last couple of months. Um, like I said, I finally got it up and running. Um, it always seemed so close, but there was always one thing after another. But it is up and running. Pretty happy with the way it turned out. Um, the piece of machinery was been in a shop for a long long time and been in use it was pretty dirty and uh, so I've still got a little bit of cleanup to do on it but uh, all in all it's ready for use so anyway thanks for watching I just want to guys let you guys know what I was up to I'm gonna start posting the remainder of the Takati 4 engine rebuild videos I shot all those last fall but I got a little editing to do so I'll probably get at least one more of those posted this weekend, and then I'll um, post the rest of them over the next couple of weeks. Um, and then uh, I got a couple other engine videos to post as well. Hopefully I'll get these manifolds out and uh, be able to show you that. So I think that's it for now. Um, nice short video, or at least a, sh a short video for Dave. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. Obviously that helps me monetize and uh, make more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.